afternoon and good evening, everyone. Welcome to the third day of the conference. I hope you all have had a great time during the conference so far and enjoyed the keynote speeches as well as the technical sessions, presentations, and tutorials. I would also like to thank the keynote speakers for their informative and very interesting talks and their great contribution to the conference. Thanks also to the tutorial presenters for their great support and contribution. Now that we are in the third day of the conference, we also uh, have different talks and technical sessions organized for today. We have three keynote talks for today. Our first keynote talk speaker is um, keynote, keynote talk is Professor uh, Joe Dong from University of New South Wales, Sydney, Australia. Our second speaker is Professor Louis Nando Kao from University of Melbourne, Australia. And the third presenter is Professor Nicholas Patsiar Rio from National Technical University of Athens, Greece. Now, let's start our first keynote talk by our first presenter, Professor Joe Dong from uh, University of New South Wales. Professor Joe Dong is a professor in energy systems at University of New South Wales, Sydney. He's also the director of UNSW Digital Great Futures Institute and director of Australian Research Council Research Hub for Integrated Energy Storage Solutions. His research expertise includes power system planning and stability, smart grid and microgrid, load modeling, renewable energy grid connection, electricity market, data analytics, artificial intelligence and computational methods for energy systems. He served as Osgrid Chair and Director of Osgrid Center for Intelligent Electricity Networks to provide R&D support for the $100 million Smart Grid and Smart City Australia National Demonstration Project. He has various power engineering projects in Australia, Asia, Europe, and America. He's a contractor with EPRI. He has been serving as the editor for several IEEE transactions and IT journals. He's a fellow of IEEE and a Clarivate Analytics 2019 highly cited researcher. I would like to invite Professor Joe Dong now for his interesting talk on enhancing renewable energy hosting capacity at low voltage distribution networks. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Um, well, thank you, uh, Chair. Thank you for the nice uh, introduction and uh, good morning, everyone, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's a great pleasure and great honor to be here to share some of the research uh, we're doing from the University of New South Wales. Uh, as introduced earlier, um, I'm from the uh, UNSW Digital Great Futures Institute and also from the ERC Research Hub on Energy Storage Solutions. Um, so the, um, this research is based on recent uh, work we did uh, uh, from our ongoing research as well as from uh, uh, funded research, including uh, uh, a project with uh, two um, um, industry partners to try for community battery uh, storage solutions. Um, then the topic is uh, enhancing renewable energy hosting capacity at low voltage distribution networks. So for I'll start from here. Yeah. Um, then these are the main contents. I uh, will give a brief uh, background introduction and, and also I'll talk about uh, uh, virtual power plant. Many of the technologies I'll be focusing on the uh, energy storage solutions, although there are many other solutions to help with uh, renewable energy hosting. Um, then uh, from the general virtual power plant, uh, I'll extend to uh, what we did for smart home energy management um, and also distributed energy storage systems to have a, a augmented uh, virtual VPP solution. Uh, then also increasing DR penetration by BSS and virtual energy storage systems uh, in the distribution networks for both technical 
and uh, economical solutions uh, to make the uh, to make the uh, hosting capacity um, technically reliable and economically feasible. Right, this is a bit of background here. Um, so we are uh, talking about uh, Australian uh, solar PV um, penetration as an example of the renewable. So most of the renewable actually is from uh, solar uh, installation. The information is taken from uh, Australian PV Institute, which is also from the PV school from uh, uh, based in uh, at the University of New South Wales uh, as a lead research university in solar PV technologies. Uh, the cumulative distribution of a PV installation in Australia, uh, as you can see in the figure showing that uh, um, this is the latest information from September this year. So the PV installation reached the capacity over 18.5 gigawatts. Uh, this will include, uh, as shown in the table, large solar farms like uh, those bigger than 30 megawatt, um, that's over five gigawatt. Um, then also uh, large ones between five and 30. And uh, uh, when we design, uh, when we define large solar PV, large scale solar PV system is uh, bigger than 100 kilowatt. So um, all the big ones count uh, um, 6.33 gigawatt for the large scale PV system installation. But at the same time, uh, we can see the smaller scale, which means so less than 100 kilowatt, uh, many of them are rooftop. Uh, as you can see in the table, many of them are between um, 4.5 to 6.5 kilowatt and also 6.5 to 9.5 kilowatt, right? Uh, they are rooftop PV installation. Their capacity, total capacity installed uh, well over 12 gigawatt in Australia. Um, so that this means that uh, the, um, the issue of uh, renewable installation at low voltage distribution level is significant, uh, well over 12 gigawatt hours. Uh, on the bottom of the page showing the uh, PV resource location and the project location um, of, uh, uh, of solar farm and rooftop PVs um, in Australia. Now the challenges are very clear. Um, the industry here is uh, in the transition clearly from uh, thermal generation dominated mix towards a renewable energy dominated energy supply. Um, while uh, in the transition, the, the key problem is how can we ensure the uh, underlying physics of energy balance? Right. This is the fundamental uh, scientific research problem. If we can maintain the balance of energy in the network, then well, we can avoid different uh, types of uh, uh, stability problems, brown out black holes, and so on. Uh, on the bottom is a figure taken in 2017, 2018, when we had a, a statewide blackout in South Australia. Um, well, in that time, the uh, conventional thermal generator gas power plant already been closed in that state. So it's supplying by major wind farms and uh, by chance the, the major transmission line between South Australia and Victoria was down. Um, then uh, the system uh, didn't respond enough, fast enough, then they caused a system-wide blackout. One of the issues identified uh, for this uh, blackout was that uh, uh, there there was many there were many rooftop PV installation. Um, so to the system operator, the total demand is not actually the total demand before accident happens. It's total demand minus rooftop PV generation. However, when the disturbance happened, um, the, the inverter protection is being activated. So suddenly the uh, total demand seen to the system operator increased, right? Instead of decreased, increased to come for otherwise should be supplied locally by uh, distributed PV generation. Um, so this is one of the reasons uh, why the control didn't work um, that caused a major uh, blackout in that state. Um, also, uh, you can see the the penetration of renewable is very uh, growing very fast. Uh, in in 2017, 73% generation from thermal. Uh, 
to 2018 is only over 50 percent. Um, and the target of 33,000 gigawatt hour of renewable generation already achieved this year. Then the challenges are um, uh, all started from decommissioning, decommissioning of coal fired power plants. Uh, and we have uh, problems of system inertia. Uh, there were frequency control answer services, emergency control uh, availability, and also the um, the uh, strength of system transmission network. Uh, they were plans to build major transmission lines connecting South Australia to Victoria, to New South Wales, and the second bus link from uh, Tasmania to the mainland. But they take time for this major transmission projects. Um, as interim solution, uh, well, no interim, uh, but as a very effective solution there, uh, there were a number of uh, um, battery energy storage projects, including the famous Tesla battery, or what we call Hong style power reserve located in South Australia, uh, providing much needed system support. Um, in the recent uh, event uh, in, in South Australia, the uh, Hong style power reserve uh, did very fast charging, discharging uh, between uh, uh, sort of over 60 megawatt in a very short time. So there was no load curtailment in South Australia, but there were major load cuts in uh, neighboring Victoria and New South Wales. This is from another part showing the effectiveness of energy storage in providing much needed energy balance when things happen in the network. Um, and uh, if we trace back further, um, after the major blackout in 2003, uh, there were many research over there. One of the problem is the modeling uh, complexity of the interconnected network. So uh, AI and data analytics have been very, uh, been advancing very fast. They providing another approach uh, to provide much needed situational awareness and uh, provide second uh, input for emergency control. Um, well, we can see uh, battery energy storage is effective. However, the cost of energy storage system is still high. And also the need or the market share of uh, frequency control ancillary services um, is a major part to, uh, for the economic feasibility of the projects uh, other than simple arbitrage while you charge when the price is low, you discharge when the sun is off. Um, so these are the market risks facing uh, investors for the renewable energy sector, uh, especially for the large battery uh, energy storage systems, which uh, pops up the, um, the need for the much needed research of uh, uh, on the distribution level, we have uh, VPPs, we have uh, 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 battery energy storage system connected on the low voltage level. Uh, this is the key topic I'm, I'm going to cover in the presentation here. So, um, <clears throat> uh, as mentioned earlier, given the challenges, the DER um, distributed energy resources, well, mostly in addition to some of the uh, remaining diesel gensets for uh, important loads such as hospitals and so on, um, the PV and uh, increasingly PV plus battery are becoming a major part for uh, many of the distributed energy resources being installed throughout Australia in many of the distribution networks. Um, so the rapid growth of PV installation, um, they cause the major challenges. One of the challenge is the unbalanced network, right? Um, so the growth, as we know that uh, um, of a distribution network, um, right? Um, uh, some household are connecting in one phase, some are connecting in another phase. Uh, so three, for three-phase fader, um, the installation or the growth of uh, um, rooftop PV are not even, and also the demand are not even. So conventionally, this is done by uh, tuning, by switching, by resetting the uh, different phases and by tuning the tape chain transformers, but, uh, but with a rapid growth, this is no longer sufficient. So with this unbalanced um, situation, um, the, there are already many problems facing both network service providers and uh, uh, residential or commercial end user customers. Uh, obviously from voltage problem. 
So given the installation, uh, in some situations, the voltage reached the upper limit and actually go beyond the upper limit in many cases. And there were system losses. If the system is unbalanced, right, uh, simple, uh, we all know that, for example, the neutral current will be bigger and the lots of losses for transformers and so on. Uh, and also they will cause reverse power flow uh, and then uh, stability problem uh, for the network. Uh, for the feeder network, low voltage network. For consumers, right, for customers has a uh, PV installation, uh, they are reduced the return on investment. It happened in many feeders with large PV installation that the voltage is getting too high. Um, so um, the, when the sun is shining, when, when this is the opportunity to generate more renewables, however, the, the network are unable to take any of the generation to fit into the grid. Uh, so people cannot enjoy the feed-in tariff, although low, uh, but still that's uh, some of the uh, income uh, to offset in, in the, the capex of uh, um, distributed generation. So that's uh, reduce the investment, uh, uh, reduce the return on investment and market risks, and people also experiencing power quality issues, not mentioned in extreme cases, health and safety, or the impact on some of the home appliances in early stage when the pro protection or inverter protection, inverter control was not advanced. Now such problem getting smaller, but you still have this uh, uh, voltage problem, losses problem, protection problem, and uh, reduce the return on investment. So the solutions, um, what we can see, uh, virtual power plant uh, with DERs, this is the one of the straightforward solution. Um, and the, the research on VPP has been going for uh, many years already. It's not a new concept. However, for market implementation, it's still relatively new and just getting started, getting the momentum from late last year and uh, this year. Um, so for in Australian context, the VPP normally composed of uh, solar PV generation and uh, batteries. You need a battery to do all the energy management control. So for a simple VPP, very simple VPP, without too much functionality, uh, which we can imagine will be, uh, you can charge the battery uh, using uh, solar power generation uh, in daytime when the sun is, is on and the generation is strong and, and, it's, and it's cheap to charge the battery. And uh, when the evening peak comes, right, between 5 and 7 p.m. or even 9 p.m., then use a battery energy. And that, that's also when the peak pricing uh, applies for many residential uh, customers. So that's a simple VPP solution. Uh, for more advanced solutions, like for example, those are, uh, the photos are the uh, VPP we did in the lab. So we, we, we have a team working uh, on the VPP research and also funded through the ARC Research Hub. Um, uh, in collaboration with uh, uh, vendors, with retail companies and some of the power companies as well um, to try different technical solutions and uh, um, also trial of uh, uh, potential economic modeling uh, to participate and benefit from the national electricity market of Australia. And as a typical VPP solution, uh, you will incorporate the monitoring of uh, generation, monitoring of uh, battery, monitoring of uh, cons consumption of power on top of a GIS system. So you can see the location of each VPP, um, each client, click it, you, you show the um, solution there. Uh, as an aggregator or as a service provider, again, it depends on the uh, financial model. Um, so we, we, in our research, we have different models. Uh, either customer buys, so have full control or it can be a financed solution. In that sense, a retailer or an aggregator can own the system for free installation uh, for customers. Then the aggregator uh, will, will control the charging, discharging of the system uh, to participate in the network. And for customers, that will be reduced electricity bill or cost. Uh, but for the aggregator, for VPP provider, they can have an agreement with uh, uh, the network company and also participating into um, the, participating into the um, 
the national electricity market um, such that uh, we have extra income to return to uh, to um, yeah to uh, recover the cost of the investment capex and opex uh, for this system. Um, so um, um, that that's a different commercial model. Um, in our research, in addition to this uh, distributed generation, uh, distributed energy storage, we propose the three layers um, to include demand set right, uh, management um, with uh, some of the research we did on non-intrusive load monitoring, uh, for example. Um, so you can, you can control the major appliances like pool pumps or air conditioning, or if you got electric vehicles, that can be part of the control of the uh, large augmented um, virtual power plant solution as well. Um, then going one step further, uh, in view of DR, we can, we can have a grid battery, community battery, and uh, other solutions. So the objectives of uh, VPP, uh, again, it depends on the different financial model of the VPP. Um, so it can be simple, simple solutions, maximization of uh, economic benefit for end users with uh, VPP installation. No matter different ownership, uh, it has to be some economic benefits. And also maximize the benefit of low cost uh, um, uh, behind meter local PV generation and uh, energy storage. So optimal utilization of local battery energy storage and achieve energy efficiency from customer side if we can incorporate demand side management into the VPP platform and also provide grid support for network service providers. Uh, if uh, the uh, size of VPP is large enough, you can sign up contract with uh, uh, distribution network service providers. Um, so that then, then you, have, you can negotiate different pricing model uh, to have better uh, tariff, but uh, uh, you will be allowing uh, the network service provider to switch on and off or using the uh, energy storage capability uh, through the VPP platform to support network. And also um, uh, with the blockchain technologies, uh, the VPP platform also will be a nice platform to enable peer-to-peer -peer trading. Um, in our research on peer-to-peer -peer trading, one of the benefits are, uh, so you have fitting tariff in some states, 11 cents, right? Um, but um, you're paying 33 cents, for example, in some of the tariff. Um, so not good enough, but if you have a peer-to-peer -peer trading, then people with VPP, uh, people without VPP solutions can trade electricity at a price in between the low feeding tariff or no feeding tariff and the actual very high, very expensive peak uh, demand or just the uh, um, off-peak or shorter prices. Um, so you strike a price in the middle of them to maximize the social benefit among the trading partners, prosumers here. Um, but there are challenges as well. Um, as I mentioned earlier, there were technical challenges, which we all know from research perspective, uh, there were things like latency issue of a different comms solution uh, and the incorporating different uh, um, branding um, of batteries, different inverters, the hybrid inverters and uh, uh, separate inverters for PV and separate inverters for batteries. How, how can you incorporate it? them into a uniform or universal VPP platform. And there are also technical problems to ensure data privacy, to ensure uh, the security of communication um, and to ensure tech, uh, system stability um, when, you, when, you're talking about, when you're talking about the support for network. Um, and also uh, to come up with a, a optimal bidding strategy if the aggregator of VPP is to participate into the frequency control ancillary services market. Then the economic challenge is normally coming from the, the fact that the batteries are still expensive. So as a solution or as an alternative option, uh, we propose to incorporate the demand side management as a virtual battery to reduce the overall cost and uh, improve the e economic feasibility of the solutions. Um, so that's the, uh, for the VPP overview. Um, now, um, 
starting from the detail uh, of a nano grid level, um, how can we improve the energy efficiency and the incorporate energy management, demand side management into the VPP platform? Uh, this is the research we did on home energy management system, or we call uh, HEMS, um, uh, based on expert system and data analytics um, and uh, using uh, on the users to assist the prosumers to make energy management decisions. This will involve coordinated scheduling and controlling of residential energy resources, uh, major appliances, uh, including controllable household appliances, battery energy storage system, renewable energy sources, plug-in vehicles, and so on, you mentioned it. Uh, the figure shows some of the research we did uh, on the non-intrusive load monitoring from smart smart meter data, you have the time series data. Then from the data, what we can do, we can do disaggregation, um, decompose the system into um, uh, the different consumption data of uh, major appliances. You, you can at least group the appliances to have a very high level of accuracy. Uh, but the, the more granular it goes, the lower efficiency and the higher requirement on the um, sampling rate. Um, so to strike a balance, uh, we propose to have a grouping different appliances like a high demand response potentials, uh, those appliances like free, uh, like a hot water system, uh, air conditioning, EVs and so on, and also low demand response potentials like cooking stoves or microwave, which you will need it when you want to use it. All right. Then the uh, different energy management objectives uh, we can say we try to reduce household cost, energy cost, or we might want to maximize the household energy utilization. Or we can say um, uh, support grid operations or a combination, again, depending on different uh, um, ownership model of the solutions available. Now, this is a, a, a block diagram of the uh, home to uh, vehicle to home solution. Um, so on top of the, the simple common appliances, if we consider electric vehicle, they're providing another um, level of uh, another level of uh, um, choices in uh, <clears throat> from demand side participation and in providing virtual energy storage capability uh, to the augmented VPP solution. So basically what we do is uh, uh, fundamental things here like prediction. Uh, we have historical data <coughs> from demand, from temperature, from solar generation. And also we can build up a building input model um, because one of the features we try to achieve is not just the, for the sake of energy efficiency that you, you try to save energy. We also, we also consider the comfort level of people staying inside the building. So we want the building model, we want the um, uh, tariff model uh, that will be helping uh, helping the um, uh, for electricity uh, cost the saving without causing too much uncomfortableness. You don't want to be too hot uh, while you know you're saving energy, right? That, that defines the purpose to some extent. Um, so given all the prediction, given all the comfort level, given all the model constraints, and uh, uh, also user preference. Uh, well, if you want to save energy, uh, you, you, you really want to save energy in a very hard time, or, or you, you don't care that much, uh, you want to have more weighting on the comfort level, or you in a, you're in a situation, the battery running low, you just, just need to charge your EV regardless of uh, pricing or other things. So you put your preference here, uh, that will adjust the dispatch weighting to come up with different optimization solutions. And this is a flow chart uh, here. Uh, one of the solutions what we call stochastic residential energy management. Um, stochastic because of the, uh, the many stochastic elements in the process, basically from renewable power, they are stochastic and also the demand, many of the demand uh, also stochastic and also there are other uncertain factors uh, involved as well. Um, 
So we uh, in the in the stochastic residential energy management, um, you can refer to the two papers uh, uh, on the slides here. So we sufficiently consider the uncertainty and the probabilistic characteristics of residential renewable energy sources. And we also incorporate the solar energy scenario analysis and uh, self-power the house by coordinated scheduling of thermal and non-thermal appliances, plug-in vehicles, and rooftop PV panel and uh, battery energy storage um, systems. We move to more uh, technical details here. So this is a multi-stage home energy management system. Mm. Three stages here. Uh, so stage one is day ahead forecasting, like what we do uh, distribution scheduling here. Uh, we forecast the next day, generation, demand, pricing, um, the state of charge, and so on. Uh, weather condition, very important. Um, so weather, weather forecast is very important if you involving solar and the battery charging, and you, you rely heavily on solar power to charge your batteries here. Yeah? Um, so that's for the day ahead prediction Then you do a rough uh, scheduling for the next day. Um, in most of the cases, they are accurate enough, they're good enough, uh, also depending on the, the level uh, of investment you put on the VPP platform. For simple solutions, just that's, that should be sufficient. Then coming to stage one, uh, uh, stage two is day ahead scheduling. So you do the day ahead scheduling uh, say will be the usage pattern, uh, when to generate, when to charge, when to discharge uh, for the next day. Uh, then you come into stage three is real-time um, tuning. So for the actual operating stage, forecast is always forecast. There are always, always uncertainties and uh, inaccuracy or errors involved in forecasting. So you have to do real-time tuning and uh, if, uh, uh, to make sure that uh, um, the system still meets your, your objective. So we incorporate the MPC control for the real-time stage uh, for horizon rescinding um, uh, stage uh, to, to do the real-time uh, final thing, final tuning. Uh, while the aim is to minimize the deviation between the day ahead planning and actual um, net power consumption of home uh, to do that. Well, for your info, NAA is one, uh, what we call natural aggregation, aggregation algorithm. We developed a, a, a very efficient uh, evolutionary uh, computing algorithm. Um, if you're interested, you can refer to the paper uh, that is efficient in our study compared to DE, PSO, or other uh, evolutionary uh, algorithms. Uh, very efficient and requires minimal uh, computational cost. So this is the three stage energy management. Uh, in the real time model, uh, predict control, um, so that's model, not murder. Um, then we have this uh, day ahead plan and uh, cost function minimization. And we have very short term prediction of home stochastic variables that come to home energy resource control decisions, then come to the home operation state guide. Uh, to do this uh, modeling and uh, sending out dispatch uh, for controllable variables in the system. And uh, I, I mentioned earlier, in day ahead, we do scenario analysis for solar power based, uh, based on the um, West distin uh, distance matrix and K medians um, solution start, uh, computing methodologies here. Um, so the clustering technologies and to determine the controllable appliances operating schedules. So the objective is to minimize expected household electricity cost, or you can change the objective function um, depending on the preference. For the actual operating stage, uh, we do semi-scenario based rolling horizon optimization. So not just simple point prediction, uh, we have scenario uh, based uh, prediction there. Um, then we can update the charging and discharging a battery energy storage system based on day ahead deterministic determined appliance scheduling uh, to minimize the household energy cost over the rolling horizon. And this is a, a system schematic 
of this uh, multi-stage energy uh, management solution involving rolling horizon uh, technologies here. Uh, so we have uh, solar PV, uh, we have this PV uh, conversion model uh, and the probabilistic model and also solar radiation uh, prediction model. Um, then coming to all the probabilistic high modeling uh, and uh, optimization solar to optimize the day ahead scheduling, then coming to controllable appliances. Um, so simple, uh, give, give a simple example. If you got a pool pump, um, then the best way is uh, uh, you can either decide to charge your battery or use the or use your solar panel to directly drive the uh, pool pump um, uh, if it's, it's a more efficient solution or if the uh, off-peak price is so uh, is cheap enough and uh, uh, is cloudy then you have the different solutions to optimize it um, then uh, then uh, also um, as user you can put your preference into the into the system to have a uh, yeah, overall integrity the uh, energy management uh, platform solutions for home energy management. And this is for the um, uh, rolling horizon optimization part. Um, so for the conventional rolling horizon optimization or model predictory control, uh, we use uh, point predictor for stochastic variables. So uh, keep moving on rolling horizon to do the point prediction. Um, when the prediction window is large, you have problems. When it's too short, you also have uh, challenges here. Um, so all we put is semi-scenario based uh, rolling horizon optimization, uh, combining point prediction window and a scenario window combined to, the, to do the prediction, uh, try to reach a balance and to get more reliable prediction and better results. And this is a case study result comparing different solutions. Um, basically, if uh, without home energy management, uh, this is for a typical small household, you're paying $1.6 uh, for total cost. But with um, uh, home energy management, different home energy management, you save a lot of money uh, from 95 cents to 81 cents. And uh, if we combine semi uh, multi-stage um, involving scenario rolling semi-scenario rolling horizon approach, uh, then you save a lot. The, the best uh, scenario, um, you save uh, more than half. So 0.66 cents there. Um, and total energy purchased from the grid also can be reduced significantly. Less than half of energy purchase required in this particular example. Um, and uh, um, the left, hand side of the figure showing different uh, uh, disaggregation of different appliances like washing machine, uh, rice cooker, vacuum cleaner, uh, coffee machine, uh, for example, everything there. Um, and uh, the right hand side showing the, um, the charging and discharging of batteries, right, on day ahead and actual, uh, and also the uh, actual state of charge of the batteries. Uh, as you can see, they are the general trend is more or less the same. However, in detailed charging, discharging, and SOC values, there are variations between day ahead and uh, the actual operating results. So moving away from uh, uh, customer side or end user side, we're coming to the low voltage distribution network, right? Um, so this, this is another project we did with two uh, distribution companies, uh, including uh, urban network and rural network. The picture is sort of a, a semi-rural, you can see still overhead lines in the urban areas, they are all underground cables. Um, then the different uh, technologies to handle the uh, system imbalance problem, uh, they are face switching devices um, and uh, uh, voltage control devices and battery um, energy storage systems to provide uh, the balancing support and supporting more renewable energy system to be installed in the distribution network. So there are three phases and in this particular example in Australia, 
uh, in one of the suburbs in, in Victoria, uh, actually two suburbs in Victoria, uh, the voltage level, nominal voltage level 230 single or 400 volts, three phase uh, preferred range between 9, uh, 0.94 and 1.1 per unit. Um, the radio structure and asymmetric structure, uh, three phase four wire system, um, then um, the, the challenges which I didn't include in the, in the slide is that for many of the power companies, they don't have the low voltage, which means 400 volts or 230 volts uh, level, um, the parameters, uh, conductors and so on. So even though you can run three phase power flow, but that normally doesn't extend um, to this low voltage part beyond the 11 kV lines, right? Uh, so from 11 kV to 400, 400 volts um, to the 400 volt network, we have to first build a three phase 400 volt network model and we uh, then analyze the system to get uh, some control solutions using the grid batteries. So this is a photo of the grid battery uh, deployed in one of the suburbs here. Uh, the approval for the site also takes time. Uh, so we do sensitivity analysis to access uh, uh, to assess the uh, maximum DG capacity by repetitive power flows and increasing penetration level of renewable DG to find out the maximum hosting capacity, uh, and also to identify weak points or most effective locations for phase switching devices and for battery energy storage systems. Um, then uh, a optimal power flow based approach uh, is used to maximize the network hosting capacity for distributed energy, renewable energy uh, in this part DER, mostly a solar rooftop solar PV. Um, and we use the active network management schemes, including voltage regulation, reactive power compensation, power factor control, DG curtailment and network reconfiguration. Uh, so voltage regulation for, for transformers, I, I mentioned earlier, uh, in many cases already reached the limit, already on the uh, upper or lower level of uh, 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 tape chain transformers, you can't do much. Um, then DG curtailment, that's what we, do, what we don't want. Um, so the purpose is to be able to host more renewables, but if we have to set a limit there and cut off renewable distributed generation, um, that's no good for the uh, overall emission reduction and no good for customers install DG. Um, the network reconfiguration is very expensive network solutions. So we look into non-network solution, uh, which uh, including uh, face changing, face changing uh, devices, face switching devices and the batteries here. Um, but for uh, also, uh, these two shortcomings are, uh, uh, are common to many of the existing solutions. Normally, uh, many of the solutions assume a balanced network when solving hosting capacity problems. So in many solutions still using equivalent uh, um, single line diagram or single phase solution for three phase power flow. Uh, but I, I, I show you next, uh, it can be very unbalanced. And most of the existing network focus on operation of controllable resources, but their allocation is not optimized, right? So we extend this to the grid battery uh, solutions here. Uh, very quickly, given the timing. Um, um, so uh, we try to maximize the total PV can be installed to the network subject to the BSS planning and operating constraints uh, and also operating constraints uh, and uncertainty involved in the system um, with uh, three phase power flow uh, model. Uh, and we have the solution here. Um, this is a, a case study based on some uh, uh, system data, real system data. Uh, as you can see on the figure, three phase uh, uh, load there. The load demand in this case, phase B is much higher than the other two phases. And for another, uh, for the same fader, right, the PV output uh, is highest in phase A, while phase B actually is smaller, uh, which also uh, explains itself. Um, so phase A with uh, PV generation uh, can offset some of the load, but still uh, very much unbalanced there. Um, 
than uh, the the 50 kilowatt battery system is installed. Um, so there were two. Uh, they can they can operate charging discharging for two hours. Um, and the table also shows the balance on phase A, phase B, phase C, uh, involving customer uh, number of customers and uh, existing PV installation. Very unbalanced. Uh, Fourteen in phase A and only four or five single digit in phase B and C. So for such system, uh, using the optimization model, uh, we can allocate the best location for BESS right, uh, in the system. Uh, two locations here, and the hosting capacity can be improved by 281 kilowatt. Remember, we only have a, a 50 kilowatt battery, and also this is this is an increment extra PV hosting capacity can be installed to the system, and as you can see the system installation PV capacity uh, more or less uh, uh, distributed among uh, three different phases uh, unbalanced. Phase A, because it already have so many PV installations, so that not that much, but phase B uh, can be installed most of the uh, PV generation and also phase C as well. So if we um, extend the ownership model uh, from grid battery, to what we call virtual energy storage solutions for voltage regulation in a low voltage network involving economic model uh, with uh, aggregators. Um, so there are two levels here. We call it hierarchical dispatch strategy for low voltage network voltage control using distributed virtual energy storage system. Um, on the upper level, we have distributed control um, which including consensus-based uh, distributed energy control strategy uh, for the aggregators to regulate the voltage of the faders, right? Um, on the lower level, uh, distributed control, uh, they, they will involve detailed energy storage system control for individual end user energy efficiency control, like uh, what we mentioned earlier on home uh, energy efficiency solutions and so on. Uh, all grid batteries, if uh, that belongs to the aggregator. And the voltage regulation control objective uh, at a lower level, uh, so the, uh, the virtual ESS, virtual energy storage system, will try to come up with a maximum controllable uh, virtual energy storage capacity in the aggregator. And this variable, PI maxim, will be sent over to the upper level distributed control to regulate the fader voltage that interact with the fader voltage. And this is on the uh, household level, the detailed level here. Uh, typically, you have uh, MPPT for the maximum power tracking and uh, also how we can uh, aggregate uh, uh, home, home side energy management, PV generation, charging of batteries, uh, then uh, coming up with uh, this virtual uh, energy storage system controlled by aggregators. Um, this is a case study with a uh, fader uh, involving a number of aggregators and distributed generation so originally, um, some of the, this is the voltage profile, some the maximum voltage and low, lower voltage, uh, the uh, high probability going beyond the limit, the preset limit 0.96 and 1.06 PU. With this uh, um, virtual energy storage system, we can effectively bring the voltage profile back into the acceptable envelope while achieving other economic objectives. So I will uh, conclude here uh, for the research. Basically, uh, what we try to propose is a three level solutions on the uh, virtual energy storage to improve the uh, hosting capacity of renewables at a distribution level or low voltage level, um, uh, extending to the 11 kV. Um, and that starting from uh, VPP, VPP incorporating home energy demand set management, and also coming to the community battery or grid batteries, depending on the different ownership model. Uh, a community may own a battery, then become <coughs> community battery, or a network company can investment in this example, a battery, uh, which will mostly be used to provide network support, shifting peak, and so on they will be very effective in, in helping the network to have more renewable 
um, be installed uh, into the distribution level. And also we extend the VPP concept to a larger model, uh, virtual energy storage, which including um, individual VPPs to large uh, grid batteries or community batteries. So um, yeah, this, this is basically my presentation and uh, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, happy to take any questions here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Long. It was really uh, interesting and uh, valuable presentation. Thank you. Uh, now the panel is uh, open for uh, questions. Also, I think the microphone is also coming through. So we have questions here. Um, Okay, so um, can I just start with uh, my question first? Uh, you uh, actually started uh, talking about you. You have you have done a lot of research about uh, different subjects, and um, um, you talked about the the blackout uh, at the beginning of your presentation. Uh, I just wanted to uh, ask about your idea about um, the battery energy storages and also. Uh, about the um, the pump the the pump hydro storages instead of battery energy storage systems. Uh, what do you think? Um, uh, are they a good inclusion or I would say uh, good solutions um, for um, resolving the issues of the blackouts? What do you think? Yeah. Well, thank you, uh, Sarah. Um, uh, I well the uh, in view of uh, Pumped hydro, I think pump hydro is a really nice solution. If uh, such resources are available, the Snowy uh, Two project uh, is a great example. Uh, however, stability is not just for um, uh, storage; it also requires a strong network. Uh, in many cases, we, we can say uh, recently uh, some of the major solar farm couldn't be connected to the network. That's mostly because of the weak. Um, to a certain extent, the weak network and uh, uh, lack of network strengths uh, that take time to do it. And also pump hydro, depending on the geographic locations may not be uh, located in the right spot, which uh, uh, energy storage is required most, while well, battery storage can be done, um, can be planned and uh, uh, put right in the location. Uh, however, they in view of uh, um, the cost and other things, uh, I think that will be uh, in the in the systems approach will be better to utilize pumped hydro as well as batteries. And also batteries can be very fast if they can do frequency control and services. So it can be a, a, a integrated um, a, a approach and also a good share of the um, uh, energy storage market to help all contributing to stability enhancement. Thank you. We have a question in the uh, chat, uh, so I can have another question here. Um, regarding peer-to-peer -peer trading in distribution grids, what are the existing technical obstacles for actual applications? Yeah, for peer-to-peer -peer trading, uh, regulation is one thing, uh, just my personal view. Um, you need a market design which allows for the peer-to-peer uh, -peer trading uh, uh, and should be a, a market entity to do it. And also on the technical side, uh, we're talking about block, blockchain, uh, but how can we incorporate it? Uh, also in, in some of the um, system, it, it works better if uh, the peer-to-peer -peer trading can be done behind a large meter uh, among different uh, uh, customers, which was supplied by one retailer. Say, for example, one retailer will buy electricity from the grid, um, then sell to uh, looking after the bills for all the groups of uh, the end users. Then those end users, they can relatively easily to start the peer-to-peer -peer trading within their network. Uh, I noticed uh, in the market, the number of companies uh, um, providing or planning to provide peer-to-peer -peer trading, but yet to say uh, widespread uh, um, rule out of peer to peer trading. So they are um, uh, both technical and uh, regulatory um, 
protocol uh, challenges to, to be solved. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have one more question, actually. Uh, you talked about the um, home area, um, home energy management systems. Um, how feasible are these uh, projects? Have you, are they uh, real projects and, or just uh, they are uh, the case studies that you have actually done? Yeah. So, really thanks. interested in these uh, projects. Yep, yeah. yeah. sure. Um, well, um, let me say they are both trial, real trial and uh, laboratory. We set up a laboratory, we saw all different home appliances from coffee machine to pool pumps to, to uh, hot water system uh, at University of New South Wales supported by an arena project uh, with two power companies. Um, so we can do all the trials uh, in the laboratory uh, with uh, uh, Schneider smart meter system uh, to do disaggregation. And also I noticed in the market uh, there are already some providers providing such uh, um, uh, solutions, uh, but a different uh, granularity um, can be uh, looking to only some, some key solutions like pool pump only, uh, or some can provide uh, more details. For, for us, we're working with our industry partner with different groups of appliances. So both is ongoing improvement. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. Right. Uh, sorry, if I may interrupt. Uh, first, uh, I want to say uh, thank you very much, Professor Jodan, for uh, for your very excellent presentation. I, I really enjoyed the talk. Um, I also wanted to tell everybody that you can unmute your microphones and ask questions or, or of course, use the chat box. Uh, but if you don't mind, I have a question uh, on a very interesting topic which you uh, touched, and that was considering that unbalance in the networks and its impact on that all the uh, relative studies that we do when we are coming to that, you considering a single line diagram for the network and doing the studies. So I just want to ask from your perspective, how important is considering that unbalance? Uh, because majority of the studies are mainly focusing, assuming a balanced system or much more simplified network. But uh, in your studies and the research, have you come across any situations that uh, considering the unbalance and not considering has caused a significant difference that uh, if it's ignored, it's going to violate some parameters or some uh, requirements in the system. So, yeah, I put this page here. Actually, this data from uh, some real, almost a real measurement, you can see is very unbalanced. Uh, if we don't consider unbalanced situation, the solution can be either conservative in this case, uh, for example, FISA already installed enough uh, PV generation, maybe the whole system, uh, if you take a lazy approach, we just say, no, no, you can't, you can't do any installation on this feeder. But if we do three phase, we can, we can say uh, for phase B and C, there's still uh, capacity available for further installation. Um, and this is happening in many parts already. So it's a, a real problem and uh, uh, really meaningful to do this uh, um, research. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fantastic, thank you. Thanks very much. Okay, thank you. Right, okay. Uh, any other questions from the delegates? Either you can unmute yourself or use the chat box for the questions. Professor Dong, um, um, just uh, wanted to ask uh, about the virtual ESS that you talked and also ESS, um, the last part of your presentation. Oh. Um, what are the advantages or disadvantages of these two? Yeah, sure. Yeah, thank you. The the advantages are we if it's a uh, when I say virtual, like uh, um, uh, it can be distributed. So the uh, basically means we utilizing available distributed energy storage resources in the network. Um, uh, whatever available uh, is virtual, not just the physical, like one single big large uh, battery system. Uh, that's that's an advantage, major advantage there. And they are located spread out of the network. So if uh, with proper control, you can, you can um, let's say, uh, dedicate, dedicate um, control action at uh, uh, 
the exact location which needs such support the most. Uh, so that uh, without affecting other parts. Uh, that's why some of the trial, VPP trial, uh, uh, happened earlier this year or late last year in many DSPs in Australia. Um, so they, they know which part require more support. So they, they don't have to, for the large battery storage to, to look after the whole thing, but just uh, have agreement on those strategic locations um, to solve it. And, and, and uh, uh, that, that's uh, technically efficient and uh, economically also efficient. Uh, one require too much investment. Thank you very much. Uh, if there is no more question, may I ask one more question? And uh, that is mainly about, uh, uh, you mentioned that those research prototypes that you do at the laboratory and now also you're working with some local industries. Uh, are you aware of any of the uh, local Australian utilities which are moving into really uh, either being engaged with, a, with an aggregator or uh, having some sort of department or section in their utilities that looks after that aggregator actions to, for uh, thinking about enabling that virtual power plants, that virtual energy storage and those type of things? Or is it at this stage mainly at the theory perspective and then needs significant uh, updates in the policy so that they can, uh, and regulations so that they can step in? Sure, thanks. That's a really uh, excellent question. Um, I know they, I, I put in two folds. The first one for VPP technical trial, uh, a number of uh, retail and uh, companies actually, uh, retail and generation combined in most of the cases in Australia, they already have the uh, VPP uh, trials installed um, uh, because they are retailers. So they don't have to say they are aggregator, but they uh, depending on the location of the VPP, they can actually do the same uh, function, some of the functionality they are already um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's happening. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's very great. Thank you. Ho hopefully yeah. that will help uh, us Australian utilities and networks to see a larger penetration of renewables and much better energy, more competitive uh, energy tariffs among those uh, companies, yes. Yeah, hope so. There is another question. Uh, according to German practice, direct marketing leads to a higher ramp rate requirement. So I wonder how could VPP help an act on active power regulation? Uh, uh, if, I, if I repeat the question, it sounds sure, active. Sure. According to German practice, direct marketing leads to a higher ramp rate requirement. So I wonder how could uh, VPP help on active power regulation. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, that, that's a great question. Uh, I'm, I'm aware of some uh, uh, small scale um, um, battery energy storage projects. The ramp rate is a major requirement from uh, uh, the network operator, in this case, AEMO. Uh, um, so uh, we have strict requirement, I guess it's taken the reference from what's happened elsewhere, including uh, German. Uh, that I would say uh, technically uh, it is possible, but uh, it needs to go through the regulation process rather than uh, from technical aspect. Thank you. Okay. If there is no question, I don't think. Okay. Thank you very much, Professor Dong. Um, it was really informative and excellent presentation. Um, uh, yeah, sorry, if, if I may jump as well. Uh, also, I wanna also thank uh, dear Professor uh, uh, Joe for the very good presentation, very excellent presentation. On behalf of myself and all the and the entire organizing committee of the conference, it was a great honor and pleasure uh, for us to have you among us and uh, we had the chance to hear and listen to your talk. That was fantastic and thank you very much for your great support and contribution to the conference. Thank you. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Thank you, Thanks. Thank you everybody for your participation. Um, so that concludes this uh, keynote talk. Um, if you want to join the
second you know, week, it will um, start in, I think, in 25 minutes. So you have to um, actually click on the link in the conference uh, program booklet. Uh, so you have to exit and then uh, connect the link again. I will see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. See you, everyone. Bye.